I'll be talking on how to manage a refractive surprise after a toric IOL. Now the thing is, when you use a toric IOL, you do a lot of counseling to the patient. You tell the patient that, okay, you have a cylinder and I'm going to use a premium IOL in your case. This premium IOL will be more expensive. You'll have to pay more. But we'll take away your cylinder. Your quality of vision will be very high. You will hardly be left with any number. And for distance, you may not have to use glasses. So you raise the bar. You raise his expectations. If you do a toric IUL and everything comes out fine, great. But what if you suddenly land up with the refractive error of 1, 1.25 toric cylinder? How do you answer the patient? The patient says, doctor, I have paid so much extra. Now why do I have to use glasses? And in fact, you also start wondering, from where did this number come? I followed everything which I, I had heard in the conference and I followed the rules and whatever the company people told me. Now, where is this number coming from? So, let's, let me take you through a little bit of idea from where this number can come from. And what is more important is you should be prepared mentally beforehand that if this number comes or I have a refractive surprise, how am I supposed to handle it? Okay. So, reasons. Inaccurate preoperative measurements, well, it could be a reason, but it's not much of a reason. Improper reference marks could be there, but not really makes too much of a difference. Surgical misalignment of the IOL, we all try our best. It could be one of the reasons. But the biggest reason is post-operative IOL rotation that the IUL just dialed within the bag. And this is where you get your refractive surprise. Now, when do you suspect that the IUL has rotated? When you suddenly get an unexpected astigmatism, best corrected visual equity, that means with glasses, your vision is almost normal. Your vision is not affected. And usually you will get these kind of numbers, mixed astigmatism and the ratio will be 1 is to 2, 1 sphere and 2 cylinder in the opposite signs. If it is plus 1, it will be minus 2, right? So if you get these kind of numbers, the first thing that should hit your mind is probably the lens has rotated within the eye. You can confirm the position on a slit lamp. That is the easiest because everybody has a slit lamp dilate the pupil, make your beam into a slit, align it with the axis marks of the lens, read that inclination on the slit lamp dial, it will tell you at what axis the lens is lying and your in initial charts will show you at what axis it was supposed to be. So, it is very easy to make out that this is dialed through so many degrees. Your diagnosis is confirmed. Now the question is, okay, your diagnosis is confirmed. Now, what do you do next? How do you rectify it? <coughs> the first thought that comes to a surgeon's mind is, okay, I will put it back to the same axis. Problem solved? No, it is not all that simple. You may get the desired results by putting it to the same axis or you may not get the desired results by putting it to the same axis. There is, has to be a way by which you can know, okay, before the surgery, what is the right axis? Is it the same or has it changed? Well, if it is changed, now you can change. Okay. To determine which is the right axis in which you want to put your IOL, you have some online softwares and you have some equipment based softwares like the eye trace. But since most of the people do not have an eye trace and everybody has an access to online softwares, 
the two popular ones are these two astigmatic astigmatismfix.com and assort.com out of which 90% of the users all over the world use astigmatismfix.com so this was introduced by these people these two gentlemen burdel and harden but it is more popular by the name of astigmatism fix.com also available on the ascrs website so it can determine if rotating the toric iul would decrease the astigmatism it can help determine the amount of rotation and the expected residual refraction which means if it can tell you okay you'll turn 5 degrees this will be a refraction if you turn 10 degrees anti clockwise this will be a refraction if you turn 15 degrees anti clockwise this will be a refraction and it will give you that axis where say if you turn 17 degrees you would have the best results with the least least refraction so that axis may not be your original axis which you had calculated okay time mera that's fast okay so the clinician enters just two measurements in this online form one is the current manifest refraction this of course one you already checked it out at two weeks and this is what is prompting you to do a correction you have to do an online you have to do a refraction and you have to determine the iul axis which also you already determined so these two are the only datas which you have to fill in this system and then you click the bus button calculator so i will just explain this form to you it's a simple form what you have to do here is this is the name of the doctor this is the name of the patient this is the original axis you had calculated let us say it was 120 degrees this is the new power which is coming in the eye minus 1 and plus 2 cylinder at 80 degrees so this is the new value which you entered this was your old value 120 degrees this magnitude of astigmatism is the power of your iol so here this comes from here 3.08 means you have used a t7 iol so this is a constant you are not changing your iol this is the present axis where your lens is lying 136 degrees so just remember these two figures 120 was your original axis and 136 is your present axis where the lens is lying so the lens is dialed through 16 degrees and this is the power of the iol okay so basically that is also a constant factor all you have seen from this is the power spectral power and the lens has dialed through 16 degrees so once you feed calculate what does the software do for you this is the data which you have entered the refraction and this is what the software is giving you it says that if you put the lens at 117 degrees please remember it was originally 120 if you put the lens at 117 degrees you get the best result and this is the best result so it is saying you are not going to 120 but you are going to 117 and why is it happening that you are going to 117 and not 120 is because now you don't have an sia surgeon induced factor because you are not making a main incision your wounds have healed at almost 2 weeks so you're just going through the side ports and dialing the lens right so this is the last slide of the software so this shows that now you have this is the ori original position 136 you have to bring it to 117 this is turning it through 19 degrees clockwise and here it gives you a whole chart it says if your lens is lying at 30 degrees this is where your astigmatism would be if your lens is at 75 this is where your astigmatism would be and this comes to 117 which is the best position 
at 120, you would also have a good position, but you will still have a little more refractive power. Okay. Once you have chosen the best position, the next most important question is, are you satisfied with this position? If you are, great, go ahead and do it. But many a times you will realize that you are not satisfied with the display. There is a number which this is showing, which is not giving you that 0, 0 kind of a picture. You may be having 0 0.75 residual with the best of your effort. Then you have to decide, is this IUL right? Do I need to change Sanjay. this IUL and put another IUL? Please sum up. 10 seconds. Do I need to change this IUL and put another IUL? Or do I have to do a LASIK over it? Okay? That decision you have to take. Thank you.